Everybody, welcome to episode 87 of the Run to Hills podcast, sponsored by Chia Charge. Chia Charge have been fueling adventures with real food made with real ingredients since 2012. Go and check them out at www.chiacharge.co.uk. Oh, we're going to do something different this week, Eddie. Do you want the good news or the bad news? I always like the bad news first. Bad news first. We're not twittering. This, that's it. Coin on that. So, that's good or bad. That's what sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure either. So I thought, just whatever you ask first, I'll say there's no Twitter. It's not, it's not a question I'd like to ask, but I'd be curious on the split of our audience <laughs> if, if they'd like just skip to the so, interview. So you, I, you're either going to be happy or you're going to be sad this week, but Gary and I are having our Christmas holiday. So we are just providing you with a wonderful interview and less of our talking. Whether you'll be happy or not, who knows? We don't care, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, so we'll we've just out. got to we'll find out if a lot of people listen. <clears throat> we've got a new format. Save us hours. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, we're having a little week, week off. So we have we have recorded like uh, we've made like bandits, as my friend says, when American friend, whenever she gets loads of presents, I made like a bandit. We have but we are having a little week off mainly from each other because we spend so much time on Zoom together. We're having a week off to create some wonderful content for you. We will come back fresh. Refuel uh, the soul. Refuel. We're going to refuel the soul. But don't worry, we're not leaving you. Don't be sad yet. We have got an amazing interview lined up with Lisa Watson. She is fresh. She was, what, not long after um, four or five days. We caught up with her. No, I left yeah. her a week. I always leave people a week. She is the female winner of Northern Traverse. She's also won the dra Dragon's Back and she's third at Cape Wrath love her loved her approach to training to life what a good soul a mountain soul could have talked to her for ages i know you're all going to enjoy this here is our chat with lisa We're lucky to be joined by Lisa Watson today, fresh from the Northern Traverse. Hi, Lisa. Where are you? How are you? And have you been for a run today? Uh, I am in Sheffield. I'm well. Um, and I have not been for a run today. Oh. It's 50-50, isn't it, with the guests? If it's, uh... <laughs> do you plan have to do you... a run today or is Thursday yeah. a rest day? I might try and fit one in later. I haven't run since the Northern Traverse, um, so it would only be a short plod with the dog. So, yeah. um, but we will see. I think I'm just going to do some gardening, to be honest. <laughs> so. Let's talk about the dog. What sort of breed are we looking at? Uh, she's a 18 month old collie poodle cross. Oh, um, yeah. she's great. Yeah. Is she running a bit with you now? She is. I'm still kind of trying to work up to it and not do too much to make sure that she has got a long life of running ahead of her rather than, you know, mm. ruining her joints now. Um, mm. fl I fluctuate about whether how far I should take her and what I should no. do. She's got tons and tons of energy, but she's also completely bonkers. So yeah. I don't think she'd stop even if her legs were falling off. So I think they do that, dogs. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> I've got a dog, uh, Rex, and he will run and run and run, but I need to be mindful of managing him because I think yeah. he just wants to run and play and please me. So, yeah, he would literally run himself into the ground. Yeah. That's good. And which part of uh, Sheffield? I've, I run a race um, just outside of Sheffield, south to North Peaks. And yeah, you're right on the Peak District, Edale. That's that kind of part of the country. Is that like easy, easy super yeah, easy? Yeah, it's, it's not too far. So I live in Walkley and my sort of local stomping ground is around the sort of Riblin Valley. But you can run all the way out through the Riblin Valley, up through Wyoming mm. Brook, over to Stanage Edge and keep going if you want. And I do I quite a lot of runs from home. It makes life easier with, you know, car sharing and stuff. Super hilly, though, isn't it, Sheffield? I don't know. It is, been... yeah, it is. Just getting to him from work keeps you fit, so. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us, Lisa, a little bit about your journey into, uh, we don't think you started running that long ago, but a little bit about your journey into running and then into ultra running. Yeah, so I 
first started running in 2012 I did a couple of half marathons and I I enjoyed them I mean before that I I don't know I'd kind of not really been exposed to running that much did a lot of climbing but I had never really considered running as a thing to do um I don't remember seeing people I didn't run at school yeah. don't really remember seeing people running other than like having to do it as part of you know, 1500 meters in athletics, which no one particularly enjoyed. Nobody um, does. Even now, <laughs> none of us want to do it. But I was relatively active with my family. Like we did lots of walking and um, I played tennis and, you know, I did a bunch of other sports and stuff as a kid. Um, my, my first exposure to fell running, I think, was when I came to university and I joined the mountaineering club to go climbing and they help organise the High Peak Marathon. And I think that's been a really big part of my running journey. And so my first memory is sitting, the, the, the students in the club basically helped checkpoint the race. And I remember sitting out on... Um, on a hill in the Peak District all night, watching these crazy people come through with their head torches. And I was just thinking, what on earth are they doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> but then when I did get into running and realised that it was quite fun, um, especially if you go a little bit slower and you can you know, chat with your friends and it became a sort of social thing for me, that actually the High Peak Marathon was something I really wanted to do. Um, so then I had a bit of an injury when I first got into running. I think I got into it way too fast, yeah. injured myself. Didn't run for a couple of years, got back into it again in 2014, 2015, um, and then basically just found a group of friends who are the Bob Beauties, and we all just decided to uh, run the High Peak Marathon together, and it took us a few years of training up and getting used to kind of navigating, running on the go, eating, running overnight, and uh, that was the start of it, really. So, what's, what, Is it an actual marathon, the High Peak Marathon? Excuse it's me. 42 miles. Ooh. It's not a marathon, is it? <laughs> how much, I knew it wasn't. I, mean, I was like, this can't be. And, um, and how much climbing is it? Oh, it's not loads. It's like 2,000 metres, maybe. I'm not exactly sure. But the hard part is the fact that it's overnight and it's through a bog, yeah. basically, the whole way. This is so. excellent training to your future adventures, though, then. Yeah. So, actually, I, I'm... It's interesting um, looking at some of the reports from the Northern Traverse, actually. Lots of people have mentioned the last bog before Horska that nearly finished them off and they wanted to throw themselves into the sea. And I loved it. <laughs> but that's my kind of terrain. I just like the rough yeah. and wet. And <laughs> so what's it like as a race? You know, I'm always interested in, it's not, some, not what I've done before. Is it um, like self-navigation or would it be taped off and things like that? The High Peak Marathon. Yeah, yeah. completely self-navigated. So yeah, no yeah. GPX. Um, and there's checkpoints every so often, which are manned by, you know, 18 year olds who are thinking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> they, might so, be there, they might not. They might be yeah, aware. it's a proper, proper adventure, the High Peak Marathon. Yeah, wow. they've had some access issues in the last few years. So it hasn't run well as COVID and access issues, but yeah, it last ran in 2019. I'm, I'm hoping it'll come back. Yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah. So after you did that, and did you think when you did that, I never can do anything like that again? Or did you think... No, this I loved it. <laughs> awesome. You run it in teams. That's the other thing that's interesting about it. So you run it as a team of four. Um, so it was just super oh, nice. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You can't have a weak link there, can you? Jeez. No, but it's it was it was so fun. And the and the four yeah. girls though, I was really keen to do it in a team of team of women. And yeah, the four girls, the three other girls I ran with, it was we were we had a great time. Your next big event after that, was that then straight into Dragon's Back? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the next like notable big event. I think I did some other. I'm trying to think what else I've done. Yeah, that's the next big one. Yeah, I've done some and other ultras and mountain marathons and things like that, but um, but but nothing like that. The sort of story that I could sort of get from your um, running career so far is that you do prepare really well for these races. Like the Dragons Back, when I read your blog about it, was that you spent a couple of you, you didn't. It's not something you entered on a whim. Which no, I a no, no. Well, I think when I entered, it's a bit of a whim. But then I spent a whole yeah. year thinking I about it that. i loved that um and when but it you... was so terrifying i can't imagine not doing that <laughs> i could i can now i talk to you i can understand i was like she's she seems to have like you entered drags but there's no like history like there is with sabrina of like all this fell and mountain running but now when you tell me you come from the climbing background this is making sense of how you're really comfortable on that sort of terrain on day one and two but actually you were really strong over the running stages as well um, and presumably maybe that was from how well you prepared as well. You were super strong 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of the other stuff I've done, it's been sort of self challenges. So while I haven't done any big events, I mean, the other big thing I did was the Munro round in 2017, and that is the best base training you could ever ask for. And you know, I'm still riding on that. It was you know five years ago now, nearly. But um, but I spent three months going out and climbing Munros every day. You know, it was multi day loads of ascent you know wet feet all the time actually terrible weather um, we had a really really wet summer for doing it um but you know we got really really fit um just being out every day and then with the same group of girls that i ran high Beat marathon with we try and do a trip every year so we did hadrian's wall we ran from newcastle to edinburgh um with another friend i went to course and around the gr27 you know i've done lots of lots of bits and pieces lots of exposure to that <clears throat> yeah exactly and that all day and so i think that's really exactly. good to hear that you don't have to do you don't have to pay thousands of pounds to do big events no not at all to, to give yourself um tick off that you're this amazing ultra runner you can do your own <laughs> you, because the hills are there and they're free and i exactly just, and i think it's to. just spending all your weekends you know all the weekends you've got free in the mountains pushing yourself and having a good time and that's what I enjoy most in life and that's why I you know do a lot of so you don't have to race loads just get out I think there Covid has really opened people's eyes to that the FKTs yeah. and you know I often mention this quite often I don't do an FKT to to get a record but just to be out and on on that course or that that part of the country yeah Covid has has, has been that's been a, a very kind of positive side effect of Covid um can we talk a little bit about your day job though I'm curious you mentioned uh yeah. your NHS <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm a research coordinator in the NHS, so I've been, I work for respiratory medicine at Sheffield Teaching Hospitals and I help set up and manage their research portfolio. Um, so it's been quite busy. <laughs> yeah, COVID. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going, mm, and then, then, then I went, oh my gosh, yeah, you must have been so busy and so different from your running as well. So I guess at the weekends you're like, get me out. Get, get me, me out of here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really lucky. A lot of my colleagues are very active as well, so I'm... Um, got a lot of people to chat to about this sort of stuff while I'm at work as well but yeah no I'm not I'm not medical I don't work with patients but um but it's nice to be part of the kind of fight against COVID and you know but things are getting slowly back to normal now we're doing a few more of our usual usual research studies the other diseases haven't gone away either so it's um yeah. <laughs> what right what we really want to talk to you about Lisa and what actually it was it was requested you won't know this because you don't spend any time on social media but um we'd love to we'd love to under Gary's got like 400 questions about uh, <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <Right. That's it. laughs> yeah I'm, I just super I know it's quite a massive obviously a massive race but as best you can um could you tell us all about it yeah i've got quite a few questions you can probably answer quite a few of them as you go though so the route for the northern traverse is the mostly the wainwright's coast to coast route which starts in st bees and goes all the way across the country and um, through the lake district across the yorkshire dales the vale of york and then north york moors and then down to robin hood's bay um so it's quite popular with with walkers there's a few variations but you know the race takes one of the kind of main lines um and i was attracted to it because it's a continuous race but also is relatively friendly in the fact that it's in the uk it's known terrain um and relatively easy for me to recce like you mentioned i like to prepare <laughs> so so it was um not too uh not too daunting from that point of view it's the first event that i've done that's not a stage race yes, so i have ask. yeah so i have run overnight before but i have yeah. not um through the day and then through the night and then through the day again and then through the night again etc etc <laughs> so um without having to think about sleep so i've never had to think about sleep on a race mm -hmm. before um i know for the stage races like dragon's back and cape breath ultra they they do involve a, you know some level of sleep deprivation in that you're in a tent and everything hurts um but but in terms of actually thinking about sleep on a more you know, fundamental you, level i.e how much am i going to get yeah and in dragons um, back and cake Rath, you only have to do that day and you yeah. know it's going to finish and you're going to see people and you can reset and so that yeah. must have been, were you quite nervous at the start about how you're gonna did you have a plan yeah i was really nervous actually actually the sort of few days before i kind of stopped being nervous because i had I realized that I didn't know what I was nervous about because I didn't know what to expect. So I kind of just got to the start line and thought, well, this first bit's just running. And, you know, I'll get to the point where I start feeling tired and I don't know what that's going to be like. So there's no point being worried about it because we'll deal with it 
that when I get there. Um, but I had been quite nervous over the few months leading up to it. Not quite nervous enough to actually go and see what sleep deprivation was like. I kind yeah. of decided <laughs> that, that that wouldn't be fun. So I didn't do it. <laughs> I read a research paper this morning that they tested people, athletes, with training sleep deprivation and non-training sleep deprivation and it affected training too much to to actually cause any benefit that's why i mean i wasn't Ooh. sure if that was my kind of um kidding myself conclusion but that's what i told myself that i better just be rested oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it wasn't worth i think maybe if the weather had been nicer in the few weekends leading up to it but i i kind of came to the conclusion that i better just get some sleep um before before the race so i didn't do that and what was the start like? I saw some lovely pictures of people literally standing on the course. And was that what you had to do? Kind of dip your toe and then off you yeah, went? Yeah, so we all walked down to the coast together and we walked on the beach. And then the, the start line was actually just in a, a field just um, okay. just above the seawall. So, yeah, it was very close to the beach. Um, but we'd all had an opportunity to go and stand on the beach. And I picked up a little stone. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Did you take a, <laughs> a tiny, tiny one. <laughs> so. And was it, again, I visualise the route as um, when you're in the lakes, very mountainous, I suppose, and then it flattens out. But as a runner, how did you perceive it? I imagine like the York Moors and stuff still felt quite hilly, especially on tired yeah. lakes. So, I mean, I really enjoy being in the mountains and actually I preferred the hillier sections to the long sections of flat. I, I really don't want to think about the Vale of York that much. It was not nice. Um, but yeah, and the North York Moors, it, it does, you do get up onto the plateau eventually, but there's a series of, um, after Lordstones, there's like four up yeah. and downs. Um, but actually, for me, I think it breaks it up a little bit and you feel like you're getting somewhere because you can kind of like tick off that, you know, those hills on your mind as you're getting yeah, there yeah. and you've got a bit of a change of, you know, change of gait going up and down and a, you know, a change of pace. It kind of keeps it interesting, whereas keeping yourself motivated um, on the long flat sections. Um, I think is a bit more challenging. I think earlier on you might be all right, but later on in the race when you're dealing with lots of other things as well, then um, I think I need that change to to keep myself going. And did you buddy up? Did it feel, I was wondering, did it feel quite lonely or did you buddy up with other runners? So, yeah, no, I buddied up with people for quite a long time, actually. So um, I did know a few other people doing the race, um, including my brother-in-law, Pete. Um, okay. So when we're quite similar, um, but we had decided that we... We weren't going to plan to run the race together because we didn't want to, you know, affect each other's race. But we kind of accepted that we probably would end up together at certain points just because of the way our running works. So early on, because the Lakes Traverse is running at the same time, I wasn't running with anyone particularly, but there were people all over the place. <laughs> I was passing people a lot, running with people for short sections. Um, I had a few friends doing the Lakes Traverse as well, so it was really nice to come up to them and run with them for a little bit and yeah. um, and then leave them and etc. cetera. I see a few other people from my club and stuff who were running, so that was really nice. The checkpoints were quite busy. Um, I bumped into the two Jameses, James Parsons and James Leavesley, I think, uh, a little bit before Patterdale, and we ended up together on and off from there until Richmond, actually. And okay. um, I caught up with Pete um, at Patterdale, and then we stuck together um, pretty much continuously until about Lordstones, I think, when he went ahead. Well, wow, um, that's a big, that's a long time. But that was really together. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we were ready for a break <laughs> when we separated <laughs> it at Lordstones, but I just couldn't keep up anymore. So I was yeah. getting stressed out trying to keep up with him. So, um, so yeah, he went ahead of me there. Um, but yeah, so it was really nice. But for a large section, I think just before about halfway to Kirkby Stephen from from Shap until Richmond, there were the four of us. So and a guy called Johan um, for a oh, large section. Of that. Yeah. So. It was a yeah, it was a nice, it was it was a really nice group actually, especially on that sort of second day where none of us had slept um the first night at all. Yeah. So we um all were having dips at certain points, yeah. but we just were chatting and it was really nice. Yeah. So tell us now, we talked to you about your sleep plan. How was the sleep then? Uh, I didn't particularly enjoy the sleep deprivation, I have to say. <laughs> I probably need to work out a better plan. I mean, obviously it went all right, but um in terms of enjoyment levels, there was definite dips related to the fact that I was really sleepy. And that was the How biggest problem. You get in the I slept for two hours at Richmond and that was it. But I did sleep really well um, when I when I slept at Richmond, unlike um, a couple of the guys that I were with, was with um, who had, had got the same plan but gave up on it. Where is Richmond on the course for people that don't know? The, it um... is 183 kilometres in. 
Okay. Um, so after halfway, but not quite uh, two thirds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so and that was did the sleep it. deprivation trigger any hallucinations? No, I didn't really have any hallucinations. There were some bits. I was kind of aware that I couldn't process my surroundings in the same way. So particularly at night, where you could see lights in the distance, they did yeah. weird things. But I was aware that that wasn't hallucinations that was yeah. just that i didn't know what they were um so quite often you, you know when you're moving it seems like the light is moving and mm -hmm. it was like what's that over there yeah but then you, you're just telling yourself no it's just a it's a lamppost but you can't <laughs> you can't uh, you know believe that it is <laughs> so i can't imagine some, like weird things nights. in your peripheral vision but you know you, it's a tree but it's something waving it's yeah. you know <laughs> but it, it didn't really feel like hallucinations it wasn't that it was more just feeling like I wanted to lie down and then mm -hmm. having to really push mentally to not just lie down whenever mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to. So. Were the nights worse than the day? Um, no, well, yes and no. There were sections. I, I think, yeah, in just trying to think. I think the worst part for me was the bit between Reith and Richmond, which is... So Wreath is about 10 miles before Richmond. And yeah. it's annoying because it's a really, really nice section. I really enjoyed my recce. It's really pretty, lovely rolling hills, but I, I just wanted to stop. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanted to lie down. And it was such a nice day that you could have just laid down anywhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then the next hard bit, I think, for me, was the bit between Danby Whisk and the A19, um, just because that section is so boring. And it was cold and wet and, you know, there was an opportunity at the A19. It was a big road. You know, you, you could stop there if, if you really wanted to. Um, but I was holding out for that garage to get a coffee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but, you know, obviously you don't. It's just your brain playing tricks on you. But um, I think a blessing in disguise, the weather was quite bad on Sunday night. So there was no option for stopping. You needed to keep moving to stay warm. Um, so it was yeah, mentally hard. But, but you weren't actually going to lie down. So in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. <laughs> was there an option, because you, like the, the uh, Lakes Traverse and, and the, the Northern Traverse went through Shap, could you have stopped at Shap and got a medal for the Lakes Traverse, or was that not even... I don't know. I don't think so. I think you would probably just be a DNF on the Northern yeah. Traverse. Yeah. Gary, you're I don't know. I haven't asked, though. <laughs> Gary. I wasn't Sorry, considering but... dropping out there, so I didn't ask. <laughs> I was still I just, really just, enjoying myself at that point. <laughs> I, saw, I just saw the route, and I know a few... Um, I've, I've done a few half marathons, and it was like a looped, and you could call it a day 30 miles and still i don't think you'd be competitive you couldn't just and win the half marathon for example but you could finish and get a, a medal even Dean Carnassus, he said in that race that he did he could have bumped down to the next um the the, the lower distance but no of course he, he, he kept, he kept going on it's dangerous giving that option to people though yeah. i think you lose the the push don't you yeah i like it i like i think i wouldn't do oh, it sorry <laughs> no but i just like that little carrot it's there it kind of sorts people yeah out, but you know i had that about 100 miles just around wreath i'm like oh i'm really proud of myself for doing 100 miles and my sleepy brain was like you could stop now you've done 100 miles yeah. that's really great <laughs> yeah you mentioned about going into shot you you wanted to cut from the garage again that's i'm just thinking about the legal 100 that isn't allowed so all that was there's fine oh, as far as you yeah you can get what you want from shops on route you can't get supporters to meet you and give you stuff you can, okay. you're allowed to have people come and say hi but they can't influence your race in any way by giving you stuff or taking stuff off you or yeah. you know uh, pacing you or anything like that so but if the shop is open it's fair game yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> they didn't let us in at the A19 garage. I have to point out. Oh, <laughs> it was man. a coffee through the hatch only, which was a oh. real kick in the teeth. <laughs> and she also said, I don't think you should be out running at this time of night in this weather. I'm like, I know. Excellent. <laughs> Just, thanks. Like, oh, thanks. That, okay. Thanks. Yeah, okay. I'll, can I stay here? <laughs> Did you tell no, I understand you why from? it wasn't open. It was a. You know, a lone woman in the middle of the night at a garage on a busy road. I can see why they didn't let us in, but it's, um, yeah, it was probably, again, a good thing. I might have laid down on the floor and not woken up again, so. <laughs> what were the uh, checkpoints like as well? I always like to know what snacks are available out on the Yeah, course. they had a they had a good selection of things. Uh, there was generally a hot food on offer. I have to say I didn't really do any decision-making. I just took whatever they offered first um, um, when I went in. But, yeah, there was a hot meal at all of them, apart from Rothstweet, I think, which is very good. How were they, Lisa? So it varied. So it was more at the beginning because some of them catered for the Lakes Traverse as well. So there was one in Rosthwaite, which is about 50k in, then Patterdale, about 70k in, then Shap, 
um, which is the end of the Lakes Traverse, which is 100k in. Um, then it was Kirkby Stephen, I think that's just after 100, no, 135k. Then Richmond, 183. Uh, then there's a long section, then to the Lion Inn. So it's a 70k section. So the Lion Inn must be. That's about a long 200. way. That's it is a long way and it was all overnight it was full full night for me that section um to the line and it just got light wow i didn't do no not all of it by myself i did from lord stones to the line in by myself um but the rest of it i was um with pete and johan um silently we didn't have any yeah, conversation it's anymore it's still a long <laughs> way without any replenishment of um, yeah so we did get replenishment at that shop um at the shop of the a19 we had a coffee and that's about halfway through that section. yeah that doesn't sound yeah. i don't think that doesn't sound brilliant <laughs> in the wind and the rain and just you know in the forecourt of a petrol station <laughs> <laughs> it's all right eddie it's fine we got replacement halfway through <laughs> there is a really nice cafe just after the a19 but obviously we were there in the middle of the night so it's, yes um, you were too yeah. fast i bet some people that were there 12 hours later had a lovely breakfast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the nav like did you ever find it quite tricky to follow along no, that was fine, really. I'd wreckied most of it, so um, so I knew where I was going. I mean, I have to say the the Bell of York section was still confusing, despite the fact that I'd done it before. Um, I was lucky that the other two had their eye on the ball as well. Um, but no, I didn't really struggle with the nav um, the map. But we did a, a couple of like overshooting gates and having to come back for them and things like that. But nothing. Do you have it on dramatic. your watch as well? Yeah, or? I had it on my watch. I just have um, just a sort of breadcrumb line, so it's not as it's not a full map. I find yeah. that you can't really just you. <clears throat> that you need a map and that to really know what's going on and I'm I'm a map and compass lover really um so I like I like knowing what's going on um, and what's it's coming quite up. a dying art it's quite unusual most people just uh I'm guilty. I have to say, hands up. <laughs> the watch has made me lazy. Um, I used to do all of my runs, you know, map, I used to go and do new routes all the time and map and compass everything and got yeah. really lazy with the watch. But you know, with more races allowing them, I kind of felt like I had to learn how to do it. Um, how to navigate off a watch to kind of get myself the same advantage that everyone else could have. I don't know how they police it. I did a one how with Hubble. Um, they GPX were allowed, but I think you had a time penalty if you got rumbled. So it's quite there's still some hanging on in there for for for, for not allowing the GPX. Yeah, well, a lot of the normal fell races are all you know, and mountain marathons and stuff. Obviously, all navigation challenges and. I, you know, I like that self sufficiency and I like, you know, I like being able to know what's coming up. I think that's the other thing you don't get from a watch. You don't, you don't, you can see exactly what direction you're going, but you don't know what you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. My husband did Dragon's Back a few years ago, and he's he didn't he didn't put the he didn't put the route on his watch. He didn't want it because he's like, no, I want to do it like proper with and a pure. map. And then, oh, yeah, I want to do it dogs. pure. That's it. That's it. I want to do it pure. I think he regretted that. But I think because everybody else has the watch. So unless it, you're all in the same boat, then you just get frustrated because you're like, how have people found that route so quickly? And he's there. Yeah. The I mean, it's all for your own enjoyment, really, isn't it? And if it's however you want to do it. So, no, I mean, um, the wrecking is the biggest thing, the, oh, the most God. helpful. So you, just knowing you've where you're going. Whole, you've done the whole route, had you, before? Everything from Patterdale. I hadn't done the first bit, but I know the lakes relatively well, so I kind yeah. of thought that wouldn't be too bad, and I knew there'd be loads of people around at that Quite point because we'd be yeah. with the lakes, you know, yeah. lakes traverse people. But I did I did spend a long time studying the map to make sure I knew, you know, roughly what was coming up, and, you know, just from being in the Lake District, I knew, I knew what to expect from which is a climb, which is a descent, etc. Are there any standout highs and uh, lows from the journey? Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I loved pretty much everything up to about 100 miles. I was definitely feeling sleepy on the sort of second morning, but well, I had a real high at 100 miles, followed by a quick low, realising there was another 90 miles to go. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the, um, the weather was perfect, um, especially on Saturday and Sunday. And actually over Saturday night was really nice as well. It was cold, it was clear, it was dry. Um, it, the sun was starting to go down as I got to Grisdale Tarn. It was really, really beautiful coming down into Patterdale. And then the stars were absolutely amazing coming over Kidsty Pike on Saturday night. And it was that one of those like perfect running nights, you know, everything. If the moon had been out, I think it was probably nearly a new moon, but if the moon had been out, it would have been a non-head torch day. It was, oh, it was wow, so yeah. clear. Um, really, really nice. Um, I think yeah, lows probably um, just that last section into Richmond, um, and then bits of the Vale of York. Um, but you know, there's always going to be lows in any kind of 53 hour period, aren't there? So uh, yeah, my yeah. <laughs> but I, I I was really I was really pleased um, to do a bit of that section by myself. Um, 
I had I don't particularly like being out at night by myself um, and I don't do very much of that in training I have done a little bit to practice yeah. for this um, but I was really pleased to do a section by myself to make sure I felt like I wasn't copping out by just being with people all the time yeah. um, and I have, didn't find it a problem and I actually quite enjoyed it um, having um, the view the the North York Moors, I don't, I don't know how well you know it, but the yeah, it's got well, kind yeah. of a plateau with it, with the drop off, and then the view over the Vale of York. And actually, I found the lights of presumably Middlesbrough uh, quite comforting yeah, actually be, yeah, in the yeah. distance. Um, so it was really nice um, that section running into the line in. Um, and then the Monday, I maybe had like a bit of a wobbly start because I felt really tired um, when I when I set out of the line in. I kind of really wanted a bit of a sleep, but it was actually quite cold still at that checkpoint. So yeah. um, I sort of trudged <laughs> off and, you know, thought, oh, if I'm absolutely desperate, I'll lie down on a village green in Glaisdale or something um, yeah. when it's a little bit warmer, but kind of found I could keep going. And then the adrenaline towards the end was just amazing. I, I, everything was hurting. Well, the bottoms of my feet particularly were hurting and I felt really sleepy. And then the adrenaline kicked in about yeah. maybe 10 miles from the end and I could run and everything stopped hurting. Well, yeah, you had such a fine. I, <laughs> it was weird. I had a chat about this. You had a real strong finish. Um... Yeah, I, I don't quite know what happened. Um, I think adrenaline, I think just I'd looked at my watch and kind of realised, set a time just to get myself moving. I've sort of been ultra plod paced. I hadn't been moving that quickly for a little while. Yeah. And then I thought, look, oh, let's just get, get on with it now picked a time that I thought I could do and then just ran and the adrenaline kind of kicked in and I, my legs, my legs were actually fine. I think the, I had a few blisters, which I don't normally get. Um, so that was, you know, a new experience. And I kind of realized there's not really much you can do about it once they've happened. So you just have to get on with it and ignore them. Yeah. Um, so I think that probably stopped my legs being too trashed because I was being so careful about how I landed so not to you know oh, the bits which point, were already yeah. sore um but yeah so I had plenty of leg energy left and I think the adrenaline kicking in meant I could actually <laughs> get a wiggle on towards the end I so I don't know how I really don't know how I sprinted down the hill at the end I really I was barely running before so. <laughs> but it felt really great good great photographs <laughs> yeah exactly that's just for the glory isn't it <laughs> yeah no no it was really good I was genuinely really enjoying myself <laughs> And what was it like the finish? I'm, you know, I visualize you've got these big city marathons and it's just the, the buzz of the, the finish, but then you finish this and um, there's probably about a dozen people yeah, milling around. I, I really like the low key races though. I mean, I always feel you're only doing this stuff for yourself, aren't you? It's not yeah. about the glory and the clap crowds and stuff. I always find it, it's a little bit weird because, you know, when people ask you or when, when you're running on the route, what you're up to and you're like, mm, you probably don't really want to know. Well, like, you're not going to believe me if I tell you. So. Yeah, do I have to explain? Because you're only going exactly. to like, oh, no, why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is funny watching people's faces change. So it is, it's a little bit of a strange um, feeling because there's some people there who don't know what's going on. There's, you know, obviously it's a tourist town. There's lots of people there who don't have a clue what's going on. And there's yeah. just these runners occasionally coming down the hill in various dates of zombiedom. Um, so, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's all personal personal challenge isn't it so i i quite like that it's low-key and just got a few you know i had my brother-in-law and his wife and um her parents there and a few of the guys i've been running with who finished you know 45 minutes now before me who were there yeah. um so it was nice and i know quite a few people who work um with shane and the volunteers so um having i volunteered at one of his events previously and i've done a few of them so i know quite a lot of the the volunteers too so there's generally quite a few people around that I know, which is nice. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Oh, you did awesome. And what does what does recovery look like then after an, after a race like that? Well, I don't know really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, I've done very little. Um, I was really, really tired. Um, so I think I took all of last week off work and um, didn't do a lot really. Just just milling around and watching TV and you know just going for short walks with the dog and you know pottering about um but I needed a nap after almost anything I was quite surprised at the fatigue actually um yeah. just because at night your body saves everything up and then all of the kind of I think the immune response to doing things like this is a bit weird I got you know really hot then really cold and heart racing and stuff like that so I didn't sleep super well the first couple no. of nights but then got got back into it and I felt mostly fine this week um yeah, I'm feeling like I could go for a run. I think it'd be easier to overdo it than underdo it. And I'm always a bit worried about longer fatigue and, and things like that. So I want to be a bit careful. I've so. seen a few people out there running already. Which, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I so I might, I, I might try a short <laughs> run with a dog, but I'm not going to push myself. 
How's your weeks. appetite? Have you just want to constant, constantly yeah. eat? Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> We talk a bit about training, if that's if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Can I just finish the late traverse chat before we go into train it? How you trained for it, and just ask any standout bits of kit, anything that you always wear, use on these big multi days, or that people might go, "Oh, that's a good." Um, uh, uh, yeah, I really love my poles actually. Um, so I'm a big pole fan. I don't use them that often anymore, but I do use them when I do these big events. Um, and I, yeah, I really rate them I think they make a massive difference when you're tired um or when you're going up things that are steep just to kind of spread the effort out mm. um so I use down as well yeah and you yeah you, so what they can when yeah, you're yeah. going downhill yeah yeah no so they're really they're really good and, and if things are sore and you're trying to kind of keep weight off one part or you know then 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 they're really really good so I use mountain king poles and they've been great for me for years so um so I really like them but you do need to learn how to use them I think if you turn up at the start of a race having not used them before you just feel like you've got this extra limb that you don't know mm. what you're doing with and they actually end up being more of a pain yeah um, and I think with your climbing background as well you've got that upper body strength <coughs> and so you're not more... so much anymore <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's exactly there, isn't it that you the arms is not uh something that's alien to you whereas I think a lot of runners are like if you just hold your poles as like accessories you actually you if yeah if, European, if you use them it. properly you get you get muscles in your arms um and I actually did notice I did notice um on Sunday of the Northern Traverse I'm like I wish I'd done a little bit more training with my poles because my arms are quite tired because <laughs> 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 I hadn't used them very much beforehand but yeah I've, I've still got the technique which is good and could yeah. put up with you know different muscles hurting sometimes yeah. it's good when you spread the you know the muscle soreness out around your body so <laughs> something else to whine about in yeah your exactly <laughs> I figured uh, that only one thing can hurt at a time and you can rest your arms much easier than your legs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, let's talk, we talked a bit about your preparation going into these, ra- your meticulous preparation. What do you, what's your training like for um, races? Do you have like a set structure? Are you more sort of like how you feel? <laughs> She's shaking. Yeah, no, I do. So I'm not coached or anything. I do what I feel like doing. I run because I love it. Um, and I love being in the mountains and I generally, you know, get away as often as I can. Um, I run when I can in the week. I'm, I, you know, I'm busy at work, so I, I fit it in when I can. Um, I'm trying to think of what a typical week would be. I, I don't run every day. I maybe run two or three times in the week um, and then probably both days of the weekend. Not every weekend, but most weekends. Um, and if I'm not running, I'm generally active. Say again, sorry? Do you normally do something big at the weekend? Yeah, I would normally do something big at the weekend, yeah. Um, I tend to go, you know, more time on feet, but slower than faster stuff. But I do mix in interval training and strength and conditioning as well. (laughs) But I don't really have a typical week and a typical structure. I just, you know, I think by signing up to these races, I do tend to, you know, do two or three day long recce's to, to, you know, which I think is just great training for them as well and on the course, so... Um, that's what I always try and fit in. But if I'm not wrecking, I'm generally out in the mountains doing something else. So, yeah. What does a, what's a classic interval session for you look like? Oh, I, I'm not very good at structuring them by myself. So I go, my club organises interval mm-hmm. sessions. So I just do whatever Dave shouts at me. Yeah. Something that makes you <laughs> out of breath. And yeah, yeah. So like, you know, four minutes on, one minute off, yeah. five times or, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I do occasionally manage to do motivate myself to do my own interval training if I can't make it to club training. But, but not what, very about, often. what about your strength training? Because that was why that was um, when I first messaged you. I was like, "You look so strong." Now I know it's, it's adrenaline. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> you did look so strong, but you couldn't have faked that with adrenaline. Your finish, you know, your body still looks. You were still running upright. Um, you look so strong at the finish. So. Do you you said you did a bit of strength and conditioning? What does yeah, so I try and go to a class once a week, but I don't always make it. If I don't, I pretty much always do a core session. Um, yeah, so yeah, one, once or twice a week. It's it's not loads, but I mean, I have quite a generally active lifestyle. If I'm not running, I do go climbing still sometimes. You know, I swim, I cycle. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't generally active. Um, yeah, but I, I do I do think that, you know, strength training is, you know, it's really, really, really important. I think if you can't fit a run in, just fitting in a half an hour core session or, you know, legs strength session, then it's really, really valuable. It's quite refreshing. You seem to have such a relaxed approach to it. Oh, 
be filled with anxiety if I don't yeah, do Yeah, but you're sweating, Gary. She's got no plan. <laughs> she's got no... <laughs> I definitely week. did feel quite anxious leading up to this one. My training was not as... You know, before Dragon's Back, it, was, it wasn't structured, but I had, like... I had a sticker chart, which was great. <laughs> and I had all yeah. these goals I wanted to hit. Of, you know, how many times I'd recceed this bit or how much ascent I'd done in a week and things like that. And I did pay attention. For this, it was definitely a case of burying my head in the sand a little bit because I was quite scared. Yeah. Um, and just life was so busy. Um, but, you know, I think what I do for fun just pays off in, in mm-hmm. the end, I guess. So. Well, it worked, my goodness me. <laughs> were, you, were you ever, just jumping back into the race, were you ever in a competitive moment uh, during the race with Elaine, who was second, or were you always in? Did you lead from from beach to beach? Basically? Uh, no, I mean, the, competing with other people isn't really what does it for me, to be honest. Like, I am okay. competitive. Like, I am really driven by you know getting a fast time or doing what I can do. But it really is about what I can do and how I feel. So, you know, there there was a point towards the end where I felt like I was moving really slowly and I thought, oh man, Elaine might be moving really well and she maybe should catch me up. But then I was just thinking, I don't think I can go any faster right now. And if Elaine catches me up, then good for her. (laughs) So that will be really well deserved. You know, it it does spur me on to to try really hard, like events do, in a way that I think just running for yourself doesn't, you know, spur me on in the same way. But, you know, I, I, I don't do it for, you know, head to head competitiveness. No. so I, di- I didn't really I didn't really feel that I did see Elaine a few times and yeah we said one friendly. point there were three of you in a check you were you'd come and you were just going well your dots yeah. were at a checkpoint or very close together and I wasn't uh, uh, yeah like, I wasn't really paying all loads of attention uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I just like to do my own thing and you know I, I was trying to be slick in checkpoints but you know you can't influence somebody else's race and they shouldn't let them influence influence yeah. yours you've got uh, to do and especially on something so long anything can happen and if you rush and miss something then you're only going to be the one who suffers for it if you don't sleep and then you have to sleep in a bush for two hours instead then you're you know that's gonna yeah, yeah you can't I think that's a great tip for people listening you can only influence your own race don't really yeah. stress sometimes you know if you get wrapped up in a race it could kind of unravel your race just for the anxiety exactly and and the competition does really stress me out as well i've tried to like not think about it and just focus on what i'm doing and doing the best i can do um but yeah i mean i can't yeah i can't say that it doesn't spur me on having people to compete with but you know actually as well in the women's race it it just depends on who turns up there's you know it's maybe 10 percent women i'm often more interested in where i'm placing overall i mean i wasn't competing with the guys that i was with it was nice to be with them and and i was pleased that they all did so well but it's like so nice when you it is (laughs) yeah um but i you know you don't get the same kind of you know, buzz from picking off a, you know, I don't know. It's, um, I think you just got to do what's right for you. So what's next now? Yeah, I'm very pleased you're taking your recovery very seriously. <laughs> um, what's next for the rest of this year? Have you got anything to start preparing for? So I'm doing the Dragons Back again in September. Um, I'm excited by the new course and to do that extra day to Cardiff. It looks excellent. And I just had so much fun last time. I just really want to do it again. Road shoes for the last day, maybe. Yeah, I've wrecked day five and six now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It was, yeah, I really enjoyed it, actually. I thought they did a really good job with day six, um, considering it's a city day. It's yeah. actually really interesting. Yeah. And that's that, when you um, see, when you see that you can see the finish and you come up, yeah. is that right? And then, and the, he's still got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's nice. That, and and day, the new day five is, is epic. I just think it's great. I'm um, really excited about that, um, cool. particularly all the rough stuff. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cool. Best of yeah, luck with that. Nice, nice. You've got some more rough stuff later on that it doesn't just all, it's not all just at the beginning and then it becomes a bit. Yeah. And the end, like finishing in Cardiff Castle is just so exciting. It's, yeah, really cool. I wonder there. if you'll say that when you're like an extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the tough trails. So if it's quite hard on the foot, but yeah, you get tip about road shoes is definitely. Oh, so I do the location way. of Cardiff. I've, I've never been to Cardiff Castle, but with Bambra, I did a race where you finished at Bambra and it was a horrible climb off a beach up to Bambra. Is that similar with Cardiff? Have you got a nasty hill? No, you just come in through some city parks. It's quite nice. Oh. But it doesn't reveal itself to the last minute. You're sort of running through the park and you can't see it and then it just like suddenly appears and you're there. Uh, so it's really cool. 
I had a mate who did it and she was like, it's the most surreal thing is that you're running through Cardiff with all these people having like ice creams and stuff. <laughs> and you're literally a zombie. You'll you'll be a pro at this, Lisa, now. <laughs> you'll just be like, where's the castle? Does anyone know where yeah. the castle is? <laughs> these strange people covered in sort of bog. You become really aware of how um, unobservant general public are when you're trying to weave through a busy, <laughs> yeah. a busy town. <laughs> They're literally just walking around asleep. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, best of luck with that. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So, and um, I'm hoping to try and fit in a Bob Graham at some point because I've not done a round yet. Um, oh my God! Like you just drop that in at we'll the see. end. Two, we've, got, we've got minutes to go. <laughs> minutes to go. She's just saying she oh, wants you, Gary. That's my favorite. Well, you mentioned Jim Parsons, and he helped at my Bob Graham round actually. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, we cool. did leg one and a good chunk of. I don't know if he did all of leg two with us, but I uh, definitely have memories of him on one of the duds. So, yeah, great company and such a strong runner. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. It was fun to run with James. It's good. Oh, best yeah. of luck with that. Yes, yeah, so, sir. Sounds awesome. That. Now you've met Gary, Lisa, shout him up for any Bob Bob Gray. <laughs> Recky's. He'll yeah, take yeah. you out. Any excuse. My goodness three. me. Any excuse to get on the course. <laughs> And I'm still quite, apart from leg three, I think my navigation's okay on it. We finish all our podcasts with some uh, the deep questions. We save these to last. Uh, they These are all based on, I'm not sure what they're based on, Gary, some sort of my idea of hill multi-day questions. Yeah, I was quite themed with all my questions, though. But um, Right, yeah, five quick questions. Here we go. Question one, favourite treat or luxury that you would take on a multi-day race? Uh, I'm a chocoholic, so anything chocolate-based. <laughs> Good answer. <gasps> Snickers, Mars Bar, Lion, is that in your sort of repertoire? Or yeah, anything that? really. I'm not for C, as long as it's chocolatey, I don't mind. <laughs> Blake, Whisper, they're all good. Oh, Whisper. Ooh. Although apart from Galaxy Ripples, because I uh, took one on a race earlier this year and it froze and then I choked on it. It was oh, no. a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> it just right. would not melt. <laughs> no, it's so, only a Galaxy Ripple in the winter. Not when it's below freezing. Yeah. <laughs> would you prefer a B and b or a, a Wild Camp bivy bag? Oh, obviously a Wild Camp bivy bag. Hey. Well, it depends what the weather's like. Yeah. <laughs> now you can choose at what stage of the race this is, but uh, would you prefer going uphill or downhill? Downhill, every time. Downhill. Well, you've answered this one already, but I'll ask you again. Map or watch? Uh, map. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the watch is nice, but, you know, if I'm being pure, then I'd say the map. <laughs> be and pure. is there a country that you would love to traverse? Oh. That's a fun one. Um, oh, that was Gary's. I did all the others. Mine were rubbish. Yours is really good, Gary. <laughs> oh, that's a tricky one. I mean, I did the GR20 in Corsica, and that was epic. I could definitely recommend that to anybody. That That is great. Um, a country I'd like to traverse now, though. Hmm. I'd quite like to have a go at the um, Drystone Trail in Mallorca. Um, yes. That's something I'm quite interested in doing. What about across um, Ireland? I reckon the women's record. Oh is... yeah, that could be really good. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Hit me up with suggestions. <laughs> I'll traverse some countries. Oh, <laughs> listeners, yeah, listeners, game. right, right in, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, and that's it for me. That was five. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. Cool, brilliant. Thank oh, you, thanks thank for the time you today. So, thank you so much for coming on uh, when you've had a busy working day as well, telling us all about the Northern Traverse and best of luck with your Dragon's Back preparation. Yeah. And we'll, we'll be tracking you, get you back on Great. board. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. And rest yeah, up. Know, we'll, we'll do all the chat about Bob Graham round as well for next time. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's going to have to, uh, he's going to send it. He's going to start, he's going to get into DMs now. <laughs> See the little uh, certificate there? You could get one oh, of those. <laughs> oh well thank you for having me it's been fun Pleasure. yeah thanks for your time it's bye been a blast bye. Oh, bye. really enjoyed it cheers bye bye what a breath of fresh air Dee. oh just so like oh two or three times a week and then some runs at the weekend just like being in the mountains, Gary, I just crushing like being it. in the mountains and she's crushing it. That definitely turning up to races, being fresh, wanting to be there, honed her mountain skills with all those um, years of climbing. Uh, I expect great things for her for Dragon's Back this year. One to watch, definitely. Yeah, watch this space. Watch this space. 
Wow. So should I do you want me to just do you want me to just say something to finish it off? Or do you want to just you just gonna say the end? I don't mind. I'll yeah, I'll say something. Um oh, I'm not gonna say it. I've said that now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some podcasts actually, this is all they do. They have a, like um my favorite podcast, the morning shakeout. There's no chat with Mario, it's bang, straight into the um hour long yeah. chat with his guest. Done. We're done. <laughs> Shall we let uh Right, that's it. We're done already. This that's is this it, yeah. could be a great new format. Done in we two have to minutes. thank a few people first, though, don't we? Let's thank our ma- the main man himself. Yes, thank you very much, Chia Charge, for your continuing for your or for continuing to support the show, sending bars to guests, competition winners, and keeping Eddie and I fueled in our adventures, and generally being an all round super supporter to everyone out on the trails. That was episode 87. My name's Gary Thwaites. I'm Eddie Sutton. And let's run to the hills. Out of Office Edition. Mm-hmm.